Have you ever wondered what the most overkill product in golf is? At least with drivers, the 500 pound brand new option will perform slightly better than the brand new 100 pound option. But with every range finder ranging from 500 pounds to 89 pounds, boasting accuracy to under one yard, why would you bother spending any more money? However, before we get into all of that, who actually benefits from a range finder in the first place? <laughs> That's my first shot of grass in 2024, hence the amazement. <laughs> what are the downside of range finders and why I think this one particularly stands out, but more importantly, how to navigate the sea of GPS devices and range finders so you don't waste money on features. Yeah, that's more like it. <laughs> that you don't even need. I've been a big fan of Miles C all the way back to 2019, where a much younger, more disheveled looking version of myself, ironic because I had no kids at that point, came across their rangefinder on Amazon and the price point was ridiculous, especially for what it was offering against the rest of the market. However, things have changed and there's multiple products on the market and multiple different price points. And for someone relatively new to the game, where do you even begin? However, before you watch any further, unlike that first review all those years back, this is a paid review and I'm ecstatic to have that relationship with Marcy all these years down the road. However, my relationship with you guys is more important. So it's important that you know that I'm getting paid, but at the same time, I'm gonna give you flaws. I'm gonna give you setbacks and I'm gonna tell some of you to never buy a rangefinder in your life. So before I persuade a lot of you not to buy a range finder, we should probably get it out the box. Let's start with the negatives first before we go into the positives. Number one was there was a scratch down the side of the case. And I'll get onto price point and the discounts offering towards the end. But if this was an £89 range finder, whatever. But this is definitely a more premium version. It comes with batteries, instruction manual, and this pretty solid carabiner to attach the thing to your bag. However, I feel like this probably wasn't necessary. And to be honest, I wanted it to screw tight and secure. However, it kind of just goes all the way off to the other end. Lastly, for the negatives, the black and gray version on the website is sold out. So unless you've got a Cobra F9 driver sitting at the top of the bag to match, it might put some of you off. But when it comes to premium products, presentation and feel is everything. Simple, sleek, very much like unboxing an Apple product. And apart from the scratch, the case is very solid, which is important when it's bouncing alongside your golf bag. However, nice box, lovely case is one thing, but when there's rangefinders out there for 80 pounds all the way up to 500 pounds, and they're virtually as accurate as each other, how am I honestly gonna say this is the best rangefinder of 2024? when it's a bit more expensive. Well, there's a few things this does differently. And a lot of this will make sense towards the end, but this is one of the largest and heaviest rangefinders Marcy's brought out. And that definitely makes a difference, which I'll explain a bit later. So what golfer is actually gonna benefit from a rangefinder? And that's something that I want to really talk to you guys about because yardages are important. First off, anyone breaking 100 should have some form of accurate yardage to the target. Now, in the same breath, when all these devices boast accuracy to 350, 400, 500 yards, I do somewhat eye roll as who actually needs that kind of accuracy from that kind of distance. However, commitment is everything, meaning that you pick a club, you know a yardage and you commit to it, even from the shorter yardages. The second key point, especially when you're starting out and getting better, is understanding gradient. This is what slope does. And to be fair, a lot of devices do this nowadays. It's not legal in competitive play, i.e. your local comp. However, this holds a prime example slightly downhill. If I didn't have the slope and obviously just took the markers, for example, it's gonna spurt out about 150. But as you can see with the slope, minus two degrees downhill over 153, it's playing 147. And that doesn't seem much, but when you take into wind as well, i.e. it's downwind, that 155 downwind and you go seven iron, all of a sudden it goes to the back at 170 because the breeze is helping. And yes, there are negative to range finders. However, the biggest bonus versus a GPS device is that slope system that comes on a lot of models and a lot cheaper models as well. But knowing the difference uphill, downhill does to your ball when you're starting out this game, I think it's a great addition 
that I didn't go on <laughs> have when I started. You'll like the new weapon I have in the bag. Look at that thing. I picked this up in a job lot. Someone's almost sanded that down because they didn't want to see the sky marks. Interestingly, it's got this even flow riptide, which normally you would have seen in Callaway Maverick Woods. But it's why I love my channel, because this Frankenstein club looks like it shouldn't work. But after trial and testing it in the studio. Oh, she is gone. <laughs> Get on the green. <laughs> right, three, three, four to the hole. Let's see how far I went up there. The biggest problem Marcy has going forward is their own products themselves. Their original base model, which I believe has been upgraded a bit over the years, is still great value, has slope system, is accurate. So why on earth am I saying this one's better? Now this would be interesting and highlight a point. 150 to the flag, but I know it's a white flag, so it's at the back, so it's probably 10 yards on. I've always added on 15 yards to this hill because obviously it's so much uphill. Oh, that's a bit better. 159, 177, six degrees uphill. My point is 18 year old Simon would have looked at 150 and would have just gone, ah, seven iron, because it goes 150 yards and you think the ball just goes up in the air. Realistically, it would have been a six iron, potentially even a five iron back then, and you don't want to be short of the screen. Hence why learning what gradient does and learning your yardies and committing to that club can be so important right 330 to the center what are we saying how far we got 60 yards that's a cheeky 270 yards with a battered three wood gotta prove it wasn't a fluke now oh get down that has gone so long <laughs> uh, i love placebo effect in golf give it a month this won't work for toffee which brings me on to should you spend more than 90 pounds because if accuracy is all you're after don't a 90 pound rangefinder is as accurate as a 500 pound one however there's differences and it's because of the negatives in rangefinders in general that i think this one does better the most. If you struggle to keep your hands steady, lasers aren't for you because it can be very difficult, especially at the start, and obviously I'm doing this in front of a camera, to lock onto the flag. However, even with great eyesight and hands and everything else, even when I was 18, trying to use one of these things, keep them steady, lock onto the flag, you name it, was a bit of a challenge at first. But the point I'm trying to make is that it worked. The 100 pound, 90 pound, 80 pound ones, they're great. Give yourself a number to commit to. And if all the features I'm about to talk about don't benefit you, then please don't waste the money. However, this is heavy, this is chunky, this is a premium model, just like all the other bigger lasers. Number two, a display that isn't black. I mean, whose idea was that? Why didn't we just make them dark green to merge in with everything on the golf course? My camera's not doing it justice, but you can see how bright it is and it is very bright through the lens. That is one of the things that this boasts about everything else, meaning it's easier to see through and also a much wider lens. And then has that flag lock on that I've showed you throughout the day to make sure that you're actually getting the flag and obviously not getting everything else behind it. But it's interesting because it is premium. It is more expensive, but it's not as expensive as quite a lot of the other brands. Oh, that is three for three, baby. Go on, get on the green. The easiest way I can describe this laser is having two cars. Both you get point A to B in relatively the same amount of speed because there's well a speed limit. But this one has sat nav, it has surround sound, it has air con, making your ride a lot more comfortable and not necessarily getting frustrated. As I remember when I first used a laser, feeling more like an ordnance surveyor. Which is our final question, Simon, how much? Bearing in mind most of the premium lasers are 350 plus, this retails at 399, but wait for it. I don't think I've ever known a Marcy website not to have an offer. And at the moment, currently they have 30% off. So this is now 220. Plus Marcy said they'll give me my own discount code as well. I just haven't got that yet. But when I do, I'll leave it in the description box down below because at 220 odd pounds, for a device a lot of you are gonna use over the next five to 10 years. I don't think that's bad value. Guys, if you've got any questions on your golf bag or golf game, ssgolfacademy.com. Catch you guys later.